Miss Wakako Kobayashi is a program staff at the Japan Center for Sustainable Environment and Society, JAXIS. Um, so she's Yuki's, um, uh, you know, uh, contemporary and um, uh, office mate. Miss Wakako is representing Yuki from Japan, she says, and she will provide us updates on the recent letter of the Bangladesh Working Group on External Debt to the Prime Minister, uh, the Finance Minister, the Foreign Minister, and JICA uh, that Jaxis uh, passed on. Um, remember, many of us who've been, um, who have joined this um, follow up uh, seminar or webinar or ADDA have actually signed on to that letter, uh, you know, that the Bangladesh Working Group on External Debt uh, wrote up. She will also share about the recent annual general uh, meetings. Um, remember, Mehdi mentioned that um, recently in this, this last week, we've, we've had, um, I think, seven of the major um, uh, financiers from Japan, or maybe it's six of the major financiers from Japan uh, of coal um, actually have their AGMs. So, um, there has been an addressing of the shareholders and the um, owners of these companies, Mitsubishi, Sumitomo, SMBC was today. Uh, and JAXIS has been in the forefront of actually pushing these institutions. Um, uh, so Wakako, over to you. Tell us uh, more and update us. Thank you so much, Vedia. Um, I actually presented, uh, prepared a PowerPoint slide so I'd like to share my screen with everyone. Yes, please. Okay. So again, good afternoon and good evening, everyone. My name is Wakako Kobayashi, and I'm a program staff at JAXS. And today I will be giving an update on the Matabari Cold Fire Power Project. So this is my agenda. First, I will start with JICA and the Japanese government on the Matabari coal plant project. Then I will move on to updates on Sumitomo Corporation and their annual general meeting. And then lastly, I will talk about steps moving forward for JAXIS. So firstly, on June 15th, JAXIS sent out BWGED's letter that all of you signed, or most of you signed, through postage to the Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe, the Japanese Minister for Foreign Affairs Toshimitsu Motegi, and JICA President Shinichi Kitaoka. And amongst the three recipients, we heard back from a JICA representative that they indeed received the letter. But since the last seminar, there are some key updates on Matabari Phase 2 and the Power System Master Plan. And these were both confirmed by Yuki through email exchanges with JICA staff and Japan's Ministry of Foreign Affairs, otherwise known as MOFA. So firstly, MOFA decided to proceed with a preparatory survey for feasibility study for Matabari Phase 2. And following this, JICA started its consultant bidding process this Wednesday on June 24th. JICA also announced that the study period of the preparatory survey um, is set from September 10, 2020 to September 30, 2021. And based on past trends, the Japanese government typically approves loans for Bangla Bangladesh in June, and considering the 120-day disclosure period of an environmental impact assessment, um, the first Matapari II loan agreement may take place in June 2022. Okay. Secondly, upon a request from the Bangladesh government, MOFA is now considering technical assistance for the revision of Bangladesh's power system master plan. Um, however, the schedule for this is still unclear. Um, lastly, there was a question on the topic regarding stakeholder involvement during the revision of the power master plan. And I'd just like to mention that JICA is responsible for this, and it's likely that consultation between JICA committee members and stakeholders will take place um, once the technical assistant begins. So as such, J JAXIS, we can reach out to JICA asking if they could create some space for discussion with Bangladesh groups to ensure that more civil society organizations and experts are involved in this process. Okay. 
relating to JICA and the Japanese government, um, in response to MOFA's decision that I just mentioned, five Japanese environmental NGOs, including JAXIS, released a joint statement expressing their disappointment. The joint statement urges MOFA to reverse their decision based on several arguments that were presented by Yuki at the last seminar. Um, one great news is that today the United Kingdom's COP26 envoy, Mr. John Merton, tweeted that joint statement that we released. And you can see here on the left side, um, a screenshot from his tweet. Uh, we also ran a social media advertising campaign targeting JICA and the Japanese government, urging them to withdraw from the Matabari Coal Project. And there is a screenshot here on the right from our Facebook. So next I'd like to move on to Sumitomo Corporation. Sumitomo had their annual general meeting last Friday on June 19. And because Sumitomo is the EPC contractor for Matarbari phase one, this makes them a potential EPC contractor for phase two. And as such, it was very, very important for us to take action on the AGM day. Um, in the morning of the day, APMDD held an online rally, which was, went very successfully, moderated by Vidya. Um, and it was followed by an open letter, uh, email blast, and a Twitter storm. And JAXS worked alongside Mighty Earth to target Sumitomo for a series of online advertisements that we ran on several social media accounts through Facebook and Twitter. So on the left, you can see an advertisement that we shared on Facebook through No Coal Japan. And on the right, you can see um, a collage that I created with people holding up signs saying Sumitomo, no more coal, um, shift into renewables. Uh, there were no major results from Sumitomo's AGM itself. However, Sumitomo released a revised version of their climate policy released in August 2019 on June 18, um, the day before the AGM stating that the company would aim carbon neutrality by 2050. Sumitomo's revised policy leaves loopholes that allow them to continue developing new coal plants. So one loophole is that it allows Sumitomo to continue supporting coal fire power generation businesses that Sumitomo deems essential to the economic and industrial development of the local community and where the project is complying with the policies of the Japanese and host country governments. Um, and moreover, Sumitomo's commitment to carbon neutrality by 2050 only includes the direct and indirect CO2 emissions from their own businesses, including subsidiaries. So this creates another loophole in the policy that the extent of business activities covered under you know, their uh, goal of carbon neutrality does not include building coal plants for other companies. So in this case, the Matabari coal plants is out of scope. And that's a serious issue that we see. Um, so lastly, I just like to mention some of the steps moving forward for JAXIS. Uh, we have three main steps moving forward with our efforts on the Matabari uh, coal fired power project. We plan to have direct meetings with MOFA and JICA representatives to continue gathering information about the project. And we also hope to utilize our role in JICA's advisory committee for environmental and social considerations as an opportunity to gather any project updates or movements. And then secondly, we will continue to run social media and online advertising campaigns focusing on the government of Japan and JICA. Um, hopefully we can work on expanding the scope of these campaigns so it reaches a wider audience, but also make sure that it targets the right people. And lastly, uh, given Sumitomo's role as an EPC contractor for Matabari Phase 1 and, pot and potentially for Phase 2, we will continue to run advertisements and online campaigns targeting Sumitomo. And for this initiative, we'll be coordinating with Mighty Earth and Market Forces. So that was kind of a quick update on me on behalf of um, JAXIS, but if there are any um, questions from in the audience, then I'd, I'm happy to answer any of them or Yuki. So thank you so much.